Hey church family, uh, we're excited to introduce to you Ivy Danger Foo. No, I'm just joking, Brent. Not allowed to name her that. I tried though. It's Ivy Madden Foo. We just want to thank you guys for all of your generous gift cards. Mm -hmm. um, we're so grateful by your generosity. Yeah, it's been super helpful. We really appreciate it and look forward to seeing everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jamie Sher, and I'm the pastor of The Dwelling Place. And uh, you're joining me live on location here at uh, in our old uh, Century Barn. We have an, uh, an old barn uh, on our farm, the original uh, barn of, uh, of this farm. And, uh, you know, so if you see a swallow swooping in on me a little bit, it is full of, like, swallow nests and, and birds and, uh, you know, and that. So, um, what I love about being in our barn is this, is that, you know, really this is a barn probably, you know, uh, over a hundred years old and it's an original form and, and uh, with the hand hewed beams, uh, the wooden pegs that have been, you know, let, that have been bored through and hold the beams together. And you just think how many storms ha uh, of life have this, you know, has this barn endured and, and it's stood the test of time. And I mean, the, the, the stories that this barn would share and and, uh, but it's also showing a bit of its age. It's a little crooked here, and we have some uneven floor that we're fixing, and we're, we're doing a work of restoring it back as well to its you know, former uh, glory. And um, it's interesting, because that also reminds me a lot of uh, how God begins to work in our lives, you know, is that he begins that work of restoration. When we begin a relationship with Jesus Christ, when we say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, I give my life to you, be the center of my life, he begins this incredible work of restoring, not taking you back, you know, to, to, to the good old days, to actually bring you forward, to bring you to, to the place where he always meant for you and I to be, to our, our purpose. And so part of this restoration work in the barn reminds me of God working in your life and mine. Uh, and so we've been talking about that the last couple of weeks um, uh, called Reshape. And we begin with re week one talking about um, that verse in, in Philippians chapter one that said, um, don't worry, but pray, you know, and in the message Bible, it says, let your petitions and praises, uh, sorry, let your petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. So reshaping the concerns of this life, you know, your anxiety, your concerns, your, you know, your, your, your worries and reshaping that instead of just letting it sit like a, you know, an, a, a block of ice in your gut or, 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 or racing thoughts in your mind is actually turning those thoughts into prayers. And, and it's talk about reshaping those. And, uh, uh, and I thought that was really good. And it said, you know, and to, you know, after that, that you would set your mind. So after doing that, or, or while you're doing that, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's not really a one and two, it's kind of part of the same process. While you're letting your worries and concerns shape into prayers, set your mind, or we were talking about parking your mind, on things that are pure and praiseworthy and true. And so, you know, we were talking about reshaping our lives by our prayer life, as, as our prayer is our talking and connection with God. Uh, the second week we were looking at... Uh, um, last week uh, on how our lives are shaped by the um, sometimes by the struggle or suffering that we go through pain struggles difficulties challenges uh, in Romans chapter 5 verse 3 to 5 it says not only so but we also glory in our suffering in the New Living Translation it says uh, our problems in and our trials so it says that we glory Paul says we glory in our problems and our trials and that sounds you know like kind of masochistic, you know, like, you know, like we're going to glory. Yes, I have pain, you know, like I'm struggling right now. Praise God, you know, I, I've never really felt that way, you know, like, but there's a, a, an understanding to this because understanding, if we continue to read in it, understanding the purpose of the things that happen. And we talked about suffering or, or, or trials that happen in our life. And sometimes it's our own, uh, you know, consequences of our own decisions we've made. Sometimes it's circumstantial or, or you know, in, in, in peripheral with the people that we live. You know, it's just being cl close circle with other people. And sometimes it's just unintentional things that happen in a broken, fallen world. And, and, and you know, and so we are always looking, going, what is the cause? You know, and, and so last week we were talking about that. It's going, oh, I got to know why. It's because I did this. And we, we try to attach where we are right now is why is the reason that I'm suffering. And Paul says that's the wrong question. So you're looking at it the wrong way. Is that uh, in, in Romans chapter 5, it says this, but 
we also know that our suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us the encouragement of the, 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 the trials and challenges of our life is that it actually shapes us, it molds us, it deepens our character, it develops its perseverance. And so I just wanted to remind you, and if you missed last week, this is your, your two-minute you know, reminder here, that sometimes the troubles or hardships we go through actually shape and mold your life and can build strong character and also hope in God. And that's what this is all about. So today we're going to continue on and read in Colossians chapter 3. And it talks about that there is a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. There's a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. And so what I want to talk about today is this idea that whether you make intentional choices or not, life and influences will shape you. So even if you're you know, you don't choose some of the experiences that happen, you know, or choose or, or be or, uh, intentional about the influences around us, it will still shape and mold your life. So I want to talk about this a little bit. Colossians chapter 3, verses 3 to 8 is kind of our text today. That's what we're going to, it's we're really going to focus on. I'm going to be reading it to you in the Message Bible. Colossians 3, 3 to 8 says this, your old life is dead. <laughs> we could just stop right at that point, couldn't we? You know, we could just, there's a message, maybe the message of the day you need to receive, you know, right there, you know, just, you know, in, in those five words, your old life is dead. The old you, the past you, you know, the, the you that you were disappointed or the you that you have regrets and, and are living out the consequences of the old you, the, where, where, where Paul says in Christ, that old you is dead. The old me is dead. Your new life to read on, which is your real life. Can I put the focus again? Can I say that again? Because it's really important. It says your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ and God. He is your life. I love that. Your new life is your real life. The real you is what God is doing in your life and mine right now. That's what really counts. That's what really matters. Yes, you are, you know, have your stories. You have your experience. We have, you know, past. But Paul says that old life is dead. That old life no longer influences who we are. It's not important. Your new life is your real life. Maybe you just needed to hear that today. Let me continue to read on. When Christ, your real life, remember, <laughs> I love just a reminder, shows up again on earth, you'll show up too. The real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. Verses uh, 5 to 8 says, and that means, this is this new life, that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, when you feel like it, grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That is a life that's shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. Can I read that again? That is a life. All of what I just described there is a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better, but now you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Remember this. He is your life your new life. I love that. Your new life is your real life. So what shapes our life? So moving kind of from past to present here, you know, what is it? What are the things that shape and mold our life? Because we're all being shaped and molded, just like all the time we're, you know, it's kind of an ongoing, you know, over the years, you know, we're going on probably year four, year five, you know, maybe a little bit longer uh, working on this. And the first job of it was is that, you know, um, Sierra and Savannah dove in and they had to clean out, you know, the, the manure out of this barn. And, and we're not talking just a little bit of manure. I thought my father-in-law was kidding because he's a big jokester. And he said, well, the previous farmer before you guys, he had cows. And then before, you know, after he had cows, he had, you know, goats. And then when he got rid of the goats, then he had chickens. 
And then when I saw that, when I came in and opened up the door and saw that the manure is right up to the ceiling in spots, that I realized that he actually wasn't kidding. That when they couldn't fit cows anymore, they went to goats. And when the goats got, you know, hitting their heads on the ceiling, they went to chickens. It took months to clean that out. It was weeks of breaking it up and, and clean. Before we could even begin any kind of restoration in this barn, the first was cleaning out the, the, the decade worth of manure. It was just like layers of dust, concrete, bones. We found a fridge, a couch, appliances. It, it was crazy. But that had to take place before we could begin that work. So let me ask you this for a, a, a question here. What shapes our life? What is it that presently right now that actually molds us who we are right now and also who we will be? The, the influences, the things that are in our life right now that actually shape our life to where we're going forward from here, who we will be. Two things I'd like to talk about today, influences and experiences. These two things profoundly affect our lives, influences and experiences. So let's talk about experiences first. Um, and, our, and, and one online article, Dr. Amy Clymer says this, we have all had various experiences that have had a significant effect on who we are. What I've noticed over time that it's not so much the experience itself that is important, but the meaning that we assign to that experience. What is the story that we tell ourselves about the experience? That's what affects who we are, future decisions we make and how we interact with others. For instance, my parents were divorced when I was 12, 13 years old, and the way that it affected me is different than the way it affected other people that were in a similar situation. I remember noticing this as a teenager. I saw other kids with divorced parents and, and how they experienced it was different and how I experienced it. And it was even different between my siblings and myself. The meaning we create from our experiences shape who we are. And that's a clear, you know, I just want to define that for a second because people are like, so, well, this happened to me and that made me who I am right now. No, it's the meaning that we attach and how we respond to that situation that actually shapes who we are. I think it's a, a little more clarity to it than just the experience yourself. This happened and thus here I am. But it's actually the meaning we attach to it and how that we respond moving forward from that. So our experiences definitely uh, uh, shape who we are. You are a product, <laughs> you know, of your experience, of your stories, as we would say. We'd share our stories. If you and I would sit down and, and get to, you know, know each other as friends, that we would start sharing stories from, you know, growing up as kids and fishing in the little creek, you know, the, you know, and, 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 and riding bikes. And as we, you know, share stories back and forth, that that is a, a huge part of who we are. It shapes our life. Our stories, our, you know, our, you know, our adventures with our siblings, uh, you know, our parents, family, where we live. These experiences shape our life dramatically. And so the experiences we have is, are, are incredible. They're an, an amazing gift. And the experiences that you and I have yet to, ex, you know, to, to experience <laughs> are going to shape and, and have tremendous impact on our life. So experiences is, a, is, is, is an, an incredible shaping of our life. And number two is influences. Influence, what is influence? So if there's influence that shape our life, what is influence? Influence is the capacity to have effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something. The capacity to have an effect on the character development. So things that influence can shape us. Influences or shall we say relationships shape our life. So experiences shape our life, but so do the, 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 the past relationships or influences we had, and, and especially the present ones we have right now. Let me ask you this question. Who do you consider to be an influence in your life right now? How have they played a role in shaping who you are today? Has their, you know, their influence been positive or negative? We all have been shaped in some way or another by those who have played various roles in our lives. Our first role models being our parents, our guardians. Before we even realize it, these people were paving the way to who we are today. Can I just take a moment and talk to parents, future parents, parents, grandparents, parenting, grandparenting, mentoring, you know, guardianship, you know, whether, whether you're, you know, whether you're, whether you're, you know, whether you're adopting and molding and shaping young people's lives, it really, really matters. 
it makes a difference. Parents have a huge influence on our early uh, behaviors and attitudes and experiences in life. And we all, you know, uh, yeah, we have, you know, grown up with things and, and there's something called parentisms. <laughs> So parentisms is wisdoms you may have heard. And, you know, it's funny as you get older, you know, you come back, especially your kids start, you know, you find yourself repeating things your parents say and your kids call you out on. You're like, what does that mean? You know, what is what does it mean when Grammy says, I'm going to give you a whack, you know, you know, and, and we have these things that are that our parents say. So let me share a few of those just 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 for fun here for a moment here. Can we just take a moment here? I just want to share um, a couple parentisms that you probably heard growing up, you know, and see if you relate to these as well. This is from your parents, your mom or your dad. Eat your vegetables, they're good for you. I can always tell when you're lying. If God wanted you to have holes in your ears, tongue or eyebrow, he would have put them there. If you, if you stayed out last night, you can get up this morning. Or as my, my, my dad said, big man at night, big man in the morning. If you're too full to finish your dinner, you're too full for dessert. If you're too sick to go to school, then you're too sick to play outside. When you have kids of your own, you'll understand. Let me, get, let me share a few more with you. If you, have your, when you have your own house, you can make the rules. <laughs> it's no use crying over spilt milk. You won't be happy until you break that, will you? Beds are not made for jumping on. Cupcakes are not a breakfast food. Go and play outside. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> when he heard that <laughs> many, many times. Always wear clean underwear in case you get in an accident. You heard your parent or grandparent say that? That's hilarious when I think back now. I was like, what does that mean? So if you don't learn how to cook, no one is going to want to marry you. <laughs> You're the oldest. You should know better. You can't find it? Well, where did you leave it last? Someone is going to end up crying. Go to your room and think about what you did. Heard that a few times. The apple fall, doesn't fall far from the tree. And when I was a little girl, or when I was a little boy, they would start to say, that's parentisms. Many of the things we heard our parents or grandparents say, say these things to us, and that's, you know, their wisdom that was usually passed on from their, their generation. But I wanted to just encourage to say, parents have a significant effect on child, their children's lives. Studies show that from birth through the first five years of life are the most impacting years on a child's brain development. This means that a child is most greatly influenced both positively or negatively within the span of that five years. Because parents are generally the ones that manage a child's activity during that time, a child's social skills are typically determined according to the environments that the parents expose them to. Children are also affected by what they see within their environments, how their parents interacted with others and themselves how they made choices and determined right over wrong all part and how all play a part in how a child develops and is influenced. Can I just say it again? Parents have a tremendous impact on children's lives. And I know that we, you know, especially in the, in the, in the young years when you're just trying to get your family going and economically you're trying to pay down your mortgage and get established and you have young children, that sometimes, you know, it, 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 you, we're tempted to kind of forget, you know, uh, this. But the most important thing that you're doing right now is to be a mom or dad. And it might not seem significant now, or maybe it's outweighed by all the other pressures of things. You're trying to maintain two jobs and you're, you know, and you're trying to like uh, homeschool the kids and trying to navigate all these things. But remember the most important thing, and you'll be especially reminded of this, the most important thing you're doing right now is to be a mom or dad. Especially later on down the, down the road when the kids come back and say, thank you for investing in my life. Thank you for teaching me to ride a bike. Thank you for being patient and teaching me fractions, you know. Teaching me how to, you know, run a power tool, how to build things, how to read, the love of reading. Sometimes we look and we're like, oh, I don't have time for this. You know, sit down and just read our kids a book. And I just love that not only always, you know, we just, you know, I read to the kids lots. They would always just be reading together, you know, and they just read lots of books. And our kids have a, a love of learning. And I love watching her sisters always, you know, the, they're always reading to the kids all the time. And the kids love, and they have vivid, you know, vivid, amazing imagination. We have imagination games and they just, they get right into it. A love of reading. Can I encourage you that your job as a parent is so vital and so important? 
So parents are a huge shaper and influencer on our life. Number two, friends. So as we get older, you know, and start becoming independent, go off to school, you know, uh, leave the house, start working, you know, as we move into life, you know, the, that uh, a greater influence becomes friends in our life. And friends are, are a tremendous influence uh, both ways. I mean, there's verses for both. And probably you've heard <laughs> uh, both of these quoted, but let me share with you. First Corinthians 15, 33, it says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. You are who your friends are. So if your friends, you know, are, you know, are a bad character or going down, or, uh, you know, their, their end result, they're going down the road in penitentiaries where they're going to end up, then you, you very likely you're going to end up there as well. It says that bad company, bad friends will, you know, uh, corrupt you. But then also, you know, in Proverbs 18, 24, it also shares in the Amplified Bible, it says, the man of too many friends chosen indiscriminately will be broken into pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So, you know, friends can be lots of, you know, fun and adventure and drama and all of that. But there is also, they can be such a tremendous shape and support and encouragement in our life. Your friends are really important. The people closest to you will influence you and I in so many ways. And I think it's really important that we be selective, um, especially in an important time in our life when we're building the foundation for career and making important life decisions to have the right influencers in our life. Um, that doesn't mean that we aren't to be friendly. We're to, we're to befriend people and share, but that doesn't mean that everybody becomes in your inner circle or everyone influences you. You know, oh, I have, you know, as many, you know, people, you know, you may have 500 friends on your Facebook, but they're really not all your friends, right? Like they consider that and say like, I, these are your friends, but really most of us would have like one to three, maybe five at most. Most people would be one to three friends, people that they really share honestly and, and live their life with. So I want to encourage you to surround yourself with people who inspire you and make you a better person. Some friends come and go. It's different seasons of our life from school to career to work friends. But the ones who stay have a huge impact on our decisions and our happiness. They've supported and have cheered us on and they have shaped us into the people that we've become. Our friends have a tremendous influence on our life. And so if you don't have a godly spiritual friend, can I encourage you to pray for that? Can you just pray that simple prayer and say, God, bring a, uh, you know, can you bring a godly, spiritual, a moral person in my life? I need a strong anchor. I want an encourager, a person that's always going to encourage me when I'm stressed out and anxious to pray. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm burnt out on life, they're gonna, you know, they're, they're gonna, you know, take me by the hand and, and encourage me, you know, and, and they're gonna, you know, give me the inspiration that I need. Friends have a tremendous influence on our life, the Bible says. And the third thing I want to talk about today, so we've talked about parents, friends, and heroes. Heroes are a tremendous influence on our life. I like to ask people that, who is your hero? When someone's asked who their hero is and who they look up to, they will always answer with the name of an individual who has had the greatest impact on their life. The hero is somebody that has had great inspirational impact on your life or mine. Can I give you an assignment? I know that I'm not your teacher and, and have no way to mark this or, or follow up on this, but can I challenge you with an assignment? Can you take an opportunity this week and write in 50 words or less, which is not much, that's a paragraph or two. Who is the greatest hero in your life? Maybe three, you know, maybe you're like, well, I can't say one. Who is the three people that have influenced your life the most? It's my favorite question to ask total strangers. If I'm riding, you know, on a plane or, or spending significant, you know, time uh, with somebody else that I'm just meeting or, you know, people, I, I usually ask them this because it tells me so much about them. Who has been the greatest influence in your life? Who's your three greatest heroes? And people love sharing this. I've never had any, you know, oh, don't ask that, that's personal or, you know, like, it's not a theological question or we're talking spirituality or the existence of God or not or evolution versus creation. It's really just who's had a great influence on your life and it just opens the door in so many ways. Who's your hero? Can you ask somebody that today? Who's your hero? We begin to see that influences may shape us, but not necessarily 
completely define us. We ultimately decide which direction to set course and have the power to turn the wheel in whatever direction we choose. Influences will always exist in our life, but we can regard them with wisdom and maintaining our individual personhood and growth in an individual. So they do shape us, but ultimately it's your and my choice on how that we respond to life, our attitude, our outlook, our walk with God. The, one of the greatest heroes, I have lots of heroes. I have so many heroes to share. We would talk about many people would say their parents are heroes in so many ways. It's for sure they're heroes, you know. Sometimes our spouse is a hero. You know, you spent significant portion of your life together and your spouse has just been heroic. Uh, in so many instances of life and that people would share, you know, their, you know, their first Sunday school teacher. I remember my youth pastor, Dave Sanko, you know, he was just, he was a hero to me, you know, at a very significant por uh, part of my life, you know, he was a hero. My first Sunday school teacher and boys brigade leader, you know, Simon Vanderkoy was a tremendous influence on my life. And that's only just to name a few, but I would look and, and, and the people that I would attribute as heroes would be people that have shaped and, and, and tracked with, even if in a short season, a few years of my life, and, and made me who I am today. That's heroes. That's a few of my heroes. What's your hero? And of course, my favorite hero, my superhero, is Jesus Christ. Remember that we read that verse at the very beginning and said, He is your life. That just reigns true. That just rings true inside of me, that Jesus is my greatest hero. He is your life, it says. He is your life. The greatest influence. I want the greatest influence to be. And, I, and we have friends and we have family and loved ones and, and lots of people and experiences that shape my life. But I want my greatest influence to be Jesus, don't you? I want him to shape me to who I am right now and who I will be and, and to mold me into his character, don't you? 1 Corinthians uh, 11 verse 1 says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. As Paul saying to the, to the Corinthian church, imitate me as I imitate God. Be an imitator of Christ. Colossians 3, 17, it says, whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The greatest shaper of our life needs to be Jesus Christ. And this happens as we just make him the center of our life, as we walk with him, as we walk with him. That is, we practice the presence of God, that we invite him into the, the normal, into our drive time, into our play time with our kids, into our, you know, into our work time, that he becomes a major influence in our life and we walk together with him. He's the one ultimately that should shape our life to make us into his image and his character, the character of God. Can we just pray right now? And let me just ask that Jesus would really, you know, that step into a place of influence in your life. And I mean, it's a joint decision. There's a partnership in this. And so he doesn't just come in and take over or grab the strings of your life and, you know, and, and just make you a puppet. God doesn't work that way. He always waits to be invited, invited into areas of, Jesus, would you come and help me? He says, yes, I've been waiting for you to ask. I would love to help. I'd love to be involved in this. Would you make Jesus the greatest influence and the shaper in your life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that we've talked, uh, we talked about today that all the things that influence and shape us, Lord, our experiences, the things that, you know, the adventures we've gone through and the things that have happened to us and how we respond and, and, and you know, and how we remember and, and attribute a value and worth to those things. We, we talk about parents, Lord, the, the parents that you have uh, blessed us with, Lord, that, uh, that have shaped and molded our life our friends, our family, but mostly importantly, God, you. I just pray right now, very simply in this, would you be the greatest influencer in my life? Would you be the greatest influence? And I, my friends that are watching this live uh, online right now and that, that, that they pray, would you step into a great place of influence, influence and mold and shape us to be what you want us to be? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy this incredible day and let God continue to shape and mold your life.